So the very first speaker we have today started off um, actually as a story from meaning two years ago. So something happened that wasn't on the schedule. It was completely off the cuff and unarranged, but we gave space for something small to happen. So we'll show you a quick video so you can see what happened. We have an asset in the community where I live uh, that we don't own, and we want to try and own it. So the uh, church is selling our community space, selling the community hall. They've got their own needs, to fair enough, but they've only given us till the end of October to raise £200,000. Everybody that's spoken today has, has spoken something that means, that sort of has resonated with me about community, about the way we live our lives, the, the things that are important to us, the meaning of just getting on with each other, being together. I think it's something that we're all looking for. We've kind of lost, uh, maybe we've lost sort of connection with the bigger institutions, the church, big politics, big business. And I think we need to sort of gather together, um, help each other. And one of, the th one of the ways you have to do that is you have to have a space to meet each other. So we really, really need to buy this hall I'd like to be able to come back to you in sort of two years and have a Brighton example to put on David Hyatt's list of something brilliant that happened because somebody stood up and took action. Wonderful. So here we are two years later, virtually to the day. And so I'd love to welcome back Ian Chambers to tell us what happened next. Thank you, everybody. Um, God, that is horrendous, <laughs> watching yourself on the big screen. I'm going to hire an actor or something next time, <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch, to play me. Uh, first of all, pieces of paper, uh, sort of still photo behind me. Guess who's over 35 years old? <laughs> Older than you, Bob. Um, when I stepped up here two years ago, I was inspired by attending the First Meaning Conference. Uh, some of you may have been at that conference, and if you've witnessed Pamela Warhurst uh, talking about growing vegetables where once was only dog shit, um, inspiration is the only option. And as again today, if you hear Karen Pine urging you to do something, it's very hard to ignore. So, uh, so I stepped forward. Um, but I was also quite fearful. Um, this was partly be foolhardy enough to stand up in front of people with 30 minutes prep in the pub next door. But also, I was fearful that, um, that two weeks into our six-week share campaign, we'd only raised 7% of the £200,000 total that we needed to get. Um, I was kind of desperate to do anything I could to save this community space uh, that was at the heart of my neighbourhood. So what happened next? Um, the first thing that happened was that uh, in the teen interval, just right through there, uh, a remarkable man called John Waters uh, stepped forward uh, to speak to me. And um, I don't think John can make it here today, but I wanted to be able to publicly thank John for stepping forward that day. John's part of a consultancy uh, called Living Leadership, and he offered the use of his professional skills to help the parties uh, involved in the sale and purchase of the hall to understand each other. Um, uh, there's a, a sort of hint of that in, the, uh, in that clip, was there's a sort of antagonistic relationship had developed between the church who were selling the hall and our campaign to buy the hall. And, and what John did was sort of calmly and cleverly guide us um, to see the real issue there was a hand, and as it turned out, it wasn't really about money, and it wasn't really about a dilapidated old roof. It wasn't really about expensive building projects that the church wanted to do and we wanted to do. It wasn't really about the broken drains. It was about the community that we, that we lived in and that we cherished and that we all wanted to nourish. Um, over the last couple of years, I've come to learn that spaces like community halls, churches, pubs, swimming pools, theatres, leisure centres, parks, squares, all those spaces are vital if the people of our neighbourhoods, uh, our villages, towns and cities are going to make changes to the way that we live. Clearly, we can't keep on doing what we've been doing for decades, living atomised, individualist lives, consuming beyond the Earth's capacity. And as Mark pointed out this morning, 
we're not appearing to be very happy while we go about it. We seem, as I said in the clip, we seem to become uncertain, and, and uh, that was spoken about this morning as well. And it appears to me that bringing life closer to home seems to be a vital part of finding a way to live and work and be happy. But how can we decide what we should do, how we should do it, what help we should seek, if we got, haven't got anywhere to gather together? So it seemed to me if our whole community could save the hall and repair its roof, it could provide protection for us, for all the, for while we gather together and figure out what to do next. You have to be able to get together. So two years have passed. Following the talks between the two parties hosted by John, the church not only extended the purchase deadline to give us time to reach our target, but they also dropped the asking price by £50,000. He's a very persuasive guardian. <laughs> And by January last year, the share issue had attracted over 800 shareholders, raising £180,000. In July 2013, the community of Prestonville and many people beyond, including some people in this room, became the proud owners of Exeter Street Hall. And this summer, after attracting an amazing 11,000 votes in the People's Millions Lottery Competition, we spent our £50,000 winnings on our new roof. The place for the community to gather is now warm, ecologically insulated and waterproof. Bob, I'll check later whether Gore were involved in that uh, <laughs> last thin item. Not only that, but to put it in the simplest way possible, Prestonville is now a nicer place to live because we saved our hall. We know each other better, we say hello more, we take part. And so I'd like to thank um, everyone at Nixon McInnes for giving me that platform two years ago and another one today. And I would urge you all to follow the lead of John Waters and, and look at how you might be able to offer the benefits of your professional skills and experience in your own neighbourhoods. For while many of these projects are in pressing need of that, what we have discovered today is a sort of wily old rascal money, my experience with the hall and similarly with other projects in Brighton like Hisby Supermarket, the Bevy Pub, the Salt Dean Lido, has shown me that just as often the real breakthroughs come through knowledge, expertise, guidance, experience. Community volunteers and social entrepreneurs have almost unlimited enthusiasm. They have abundant passion for their projects. They'll offer hour after hour of their precious time. But the benefit of professional guidance can save many of those hours of research. They prevent expensive mistakes, give purpose and direction instead of sort of chaos and blind alleys. As businesses and as individuals, you can make a contribution to community projects and thus communal happiness. Go looking for them. Listen to their stories with patience and humility. If you feel you can't help, don't. But do ask yourself, do you know somebody who can? Above all, step forward, do something. And I'd just like to add one last cheeky plug. If you want to experience Exeter Street Hall and its lovely community in action, go to the website exeterstreethall.org and book tickets for our French soiree this Saturday. <laughs> I'm cooking the food and we've got a licensed bar. Thanks very much. <laughs>